All right, so we are back. This time it's with little bite-sized pieces, so we're gonna be having a bunch of lightning talks. So next up we have Zane Asgar, who is going to be talking about Pixie. Hi everyone, today I'll talk about data exfiltration on the edge with Pixie. Um, so a little bit about me, I'm Zane, um, I'm the general manager and uh, VP at New Relic working on the Pixie and Open Ecosystem teams. Um, I was originally the co-founder and CEO of Pixie Labs, uh, which was acquired by New Relic. Um, and I'm also an adjunct professor of computer science at Stanford. So before I get started, a little bit of a disclaimer. Uh, I know I'm in an audience full of security folks and you know, I'm not a security expert, so there are probably a lot of holes in this, but I uh, just wanted to put that out there. And the contents of this talk are not meant to be used in production. Um, our goal is to demonstrate some ideas and start some discussions, not to try to uh, push this towards a, a production use case. So what is uh, the data exfiltration risk? So you know, we think that data exfiltration is a huge risk, and that means that you're leaking in information outside of your cluster. So for example, you might be sending credit cards, social security numbers, phone numbers, and other, other identifiable information outside of your Kubernetes cluster or even within your services where it should not be happening. Um, and ultimately, you know, this can come back and, and cost you know, in terms of, uh, probably in terms of money because of all the data loss and uh, potential customer trust loss that you'll have. So the question right here is, wouldn't it be great if sensitive data leaving your cluster could be found um, in, a, in a transparent way. And you know, we say that it also starts with observability, um, mostly because Pixie is originally a performance observability tool, and uh, we were trying to extend it to do some more use cases. So what is Pixie? Uh, probably not a lot of folks in this community are familiar with it, um, but we started out with our goal of performance debugging without manual instrumentation. Um, so we do all the basic stuff like CPU, memory, network, you know, grab all message fans and latencies, and you're probably seeing where this is going now, um, and things like performance profiles. Uh, but there are three characteristics of Pixie, uh, which I think make it very useful to do things in the security space. So the first one of them is this, this concept of zero instrumentation. Um, there's another session going on next door in eBPF, uh, but Pixie basically leverages eBPF to allow you to monitor your applications without doing any manual instrumentation. And this level of instrumentation is pretty deep. It not only allows you to capture things like, here's the HTTP message data, but it can tell you, you know, what commands are getting executed, what's actually contained in those message bodies. Um, and it can do all of this without having to change your application, so you know that the observability always exists. Um, the other characteristic we think is useful is that we have a distributed architecture, uh, which means that we can take a look at a lot of data. Since you can deploy this on every single node, you don't have to worry about having bottlenecks um, for, for looking at what's, for actually inspecting the data. Um, and the third thing is this concept around a scriptable interface. You can actually write scripts which can look for, um, which can look for uh, you know, data loss. So very quickly, I'll talk about you know, very high level diagram of the Pixie architecture. So at the highest layer, you, know, you have our APIs, UIs, and CLIs. Uh, there's a cloud system to help orchestrate all of this. Uh, but most of the heavy lifting happens down here with the collector and aggregator and the actual Kubernetes nodes. Uh, we deploy this thing called the Pixie Edge module on every single node. Uh, there's a data collector based on eBPF that collects information across all your pods running on Kubernetes. Um, and then we store this information you know, in like a ring buffer so we can query it later uh, and run analysis on it. Um, and everything inside of Pixie is scriptable with a language designed to do data analysis and, and machine learning. Uh, so it's basically valid Python, valid pandas, um, and you can essentially operate on data frames. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. There's more information available um, available on our on our website or GitHub repo. So, quick note on how can observability catch data leaks. So the first thing we're going to do is use Pixie to trace all the traffic on your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we can actually do this for both encrypted and unencrypted traffic. Um, more information about that, you know, in our, in our documentation. The second thing we're going to do is run a script to find messages that have sensitive information. For example, credit card numbers, social security numbers, things like email addresses. And then we're going to filter the traffic uh, to things that are egressing your Kubernetes cluster. 
Um, and lastly, we're going to look at the egress of this sensitive data to see if it's actually legitimate. So here's the demo scenario, um, and we're almost, uh, almost at the end of the talk. Uh, so we have a Kubernetes cluster running a legitimate pod that's making SSL requests to the Stripe API. Then we have two malicious pods. One of them is making HTTP requests um, uh, to uh, the post test server, and another uh, malicious pod that's making HTTPS requests. And we're going to basically try to see if we can find that in our Kubernetes cluster. So with that, I'll switch over to a demo. I don't know why I hit refresh there, but anyways, so I have my demo cluster pulled up. Um, so Pixie takes like about five minutes to install, and since we don't require you to change any code, you'll immediately be able to see all, all the data. Um, if you go down here, we have a list of our, our namespaces, and I'm running this data exfiltration demo over here. Uh, you can see that there's some legitimate Stripe egress going to some IP, and then um, there is some malicious egress pods talking to some other IP. But this isn't entirely that useful. It's just telling us there's some communication happening. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that Pixie works on this concept of scripts. So we have a script over here called egress. So I can look for PII egress. This is a beta script. So if I run this script, um, we're seeing a ton of HTTP traffic going to various IPs. Um, we can turn on some better DNS resolution because Pixie traces DNS traffic. And with that, we should be able to see that there's some HTTP traffic flowing to Stripe. And then this yellow bar means there's mixed traffic between HTTP and HTTPS flowing to PTSP2. If I go over here, um, we should actually be able to see an example request. So an example request, it's leaking the name, credit card information, and phone number. Um, if everyone's freaking out with the data that we're looking at, uh, we do have capabilities to obfuscate that so you can't see it in the UI. Um, but essentially, we found the, the request, um, and we can, we can trace it regardless of, like I said, oops, sorry, I meant to go down here. Um, you can go over here and see what type of protocol it is and get some more, oops, sorry, let's click. Um, get some more, more details about, about what's, what's happening. That's all I had for the demo. Um, one of the things I want to say is with eBPF, this is really only the beginning. Uh, there's lots of other things you can do and other capabilities built in. Uh, so one of them, you know, things like monitoring file accesses, system calls, process execution, uh, look at what files are being accessed and which information is leaking, um, and all of that can be built in uh, at the BPF layer. And with that, that's all I, all I have. And uh, please check out our website and GitHub for more information. Thanks. Any testing? Testing? All right, there we go. Uh, the question is, what is the performance overhead of this? Yeah, so that really depends on uh, what level of things you're scanning. Um, the performance overhead of actually collecting the data, um, our target in Pixie is under 5%. Uh, since we're mostly capturing the stuff at the kernel level, it's, it's very efficient. Um, but yeah, our target's under 5%. We usually try to keep it under like 2 to 3. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, so with all this uh, sensitive data, are we just sending that all into the cloud, or can you host it on-prem, kind of keep it in-house as well? So two things. One is you can host uh, everything on-prem, so everything is available, uh, both the cloud side and the uh, stuff that's deployed. Um, jumping back to this, we actually don't send any data to the cloud. Even when you're running scripts, all the data is being run within your cluster anyways. Um, and if you do view stuff in the UI, it's end-to-end -end encrypted, so the cloud can't actually see the data. Uh, I don't see any others. All right, thank you.